Hi all, today I'm going to cover Azure AWS GCP DevOps related day-to-day -day activities. Before we jump into our today's topic, let me just give you a quick walkthrough of my channel. Here I usually cover the real-time based scenarios, real-time interview questions and also few features of the cloud in the simplified manner. At the same time, just before getting into this, you can also go through my software architecture where you can find the DevOps related architecture. This will help you to understand the CA CD pipeline at the same time the various tools which are being used under the DevOps processes. So let us get into the today's topic which are day to day activities for the DevOps. DevOps is a vast subject and it got its own uh, different roles and responsibilities based on the type of JD it is defined. As we know there are plenty of tools available for DevOps. Um, it could be on-premises, Azure, AWS, GCP. There are plenty of tools available for monitoring, for CI CD pipelines, for the code repos, uh, Jenkins server, Bamboo and uh, Azure has its own server. So it is really vast and not every person knows everything in this particular area so try to focus on one particular technology or devops area so that you can really well prepare for your interview don't try to learn everything within the devops concepts that is almost impossible i can say so i'm just trying to cover or define uh, into three different roles of the cloud DevOps. One is Azure AWS GCP, which is cloud-based DevOps. The other one is on-premises DevOps. The other one is DevOps SRE. Uh, SRE should know completely on the DevOps side and also they need to know additional things. That's where the site reliability engineer comes into the picture. In few organizations, they call uh, DevOps as a SRE, but SRE responsibilities are a little more extensive than the regular DevOps guy. That's where the whole difference comes. If you further subcategorize into the cloud space, people may expect more into PaaS and few organizations may expect uh, more into IaaS, infrastructure as a service, single cloud or multi-cloud. Uh, they may expect AKS, ACS, Azure Container Service or Azure uh, Kubernetes Service. Similarly, AWS and GCP has their own uh, Kubernetes and Container Services as a pass. So based on the type of requirement or you know the structure they are using, this complete requirement get changed. I don't think any organization or any interviewer will expect you to cover all those technologies what they are expecting. If you can cover 60 to 80 percent you are very good at devops whatever they are asking for if the interviewer or your the organization is expecting 100 percent match that means they are nowhere in the market they are nowhere in the world so that is almost impossible but mainly focus what you want to be whether you want to be on the cloud side or on premises dev devops it is totally your own servers even if it is a on the cloud, they will take EC2 instance of the AWS or Azure VM and they configure their own servers uh, by using the Jenkins or Bamboo or some other tools which are available in the market. There is no big difference. Instead of doing it on premises, they will do it on the cloud by using the instances of the virtual machine and then they configure it. Uh, similarly, Kubernetes, Docker, they will completely go based on the IAS based. So uh, this is one particular role like they want, um, the very few companies completely go with the IAS or their own on-premises servers. And DevOps SRE, addition to what the cloud or uh, on-premises DevOps does, they will also need to know what are the types of deployment they need to really care about availability, scalability, disaster recovery, also very good monitoring systems in place, recovering strategies, how do they recover from the fails, uh, support to operations team. So these are the few addition uh, responsibilities, but there are plenty of other things which 
people can add uh, i'm not saying that confined to this but based on my experience based on what i'm coming across i'm placing few categories and types of requirement and also different uh, rules and responsibilities let us get into the day-to-day -day activities so in the cloud devops day-to-day -day activities i have listed down few i don't say that these are the only responsibilities for any devops will have but i am saying that these are the few responsibilities most commonly uh, any devops come across let us go one by one administration of code repos so devops sh definitely should maintain the code repos also he is responsible to give the permissions to the newly onboarded employees and who is working in the respective program or a project at the same time he is responsible to to remove the permissions whoever is offboarded from the program or a project that is one of the aspect then build a movement to staging or production i'm talking only the day-to-day -day responsibilities not in the overall activities i'm going to cover cover overall activities in the next slide so build movement to staging or production so any build which is from a dev to QA, QA to maybe kind of pre-prod or hot fixes, all those things can be automated. Sometimes a uh, few organizations prefer to have manual trigger from the QA to maybe pre-prod or staging to the production rather than having a automatic trigger. That's where the DevOps also get involved to move the code from one system to or one environment to the other environment release communication so devops also main is the release communication whatever the release going to happen that communication need to be sent to the respective stakeholders when he is pushing the build or when he is moving the builds from one system to the other system it's not like about the whole product release information or communication that anyway it will be taken care by the program manager or a product owner but here we are talking about only the build movement related information to the respective stakeholders who can be a program manager uh, also a developer or maybe technical architects or to all those people this release communication will be passed uh, also the the communication is not restricted there the communication can be like related to some downtime or some related uh, production related issues uh, all those communications can be passed by him and he will become a bridge for all these activities so as a devops uh, uh, the person need to build the CI/CD pipelines for the different type of programs. It can be a day-to-day -day activity or it can be overall activity also or one-time activity also you can say or based on how many programs you are dealing with. Configuring tools like SonarQ, Black Duck, Coverty. You don't really care what it generates and how it generates. You only configure this type of tools as part of your pipelines whether you want to do it in the ca pipeline or cd pipeline that requirement will be given by your technical architect or development team so you will just only configure those to the various programs so writing templates for arm or terraform or cloud formation is another aspect of a devops guy so whatever the changes uh, infrastructure related changes or maybe even you are using a pass based so those related changes need to be coded in the respective templates based on what the organization is using uh, more or less people might be using cloud formation or arm um, or mostly or widely used uh, templates or terraform so be prepared for that kubernetes docker container management in case if you are going with um, IAS or even pass uh, the respective kubernetes and dockers need to be managed and monitored end-to-end -end automation in devops so always one target of the devops is end-to-end -end automation they need to always come up with the plans like how that need to be automated tomorrow today we might be covering 20 percent automation in our whole uh, release process but maybe how will you increase for the next month next to next month so that kind of plan has to be there in place and they need to regularly identify what are the gaps to automate uh, to save that time 
so that is one of the key responsibility of any devops post incident support uh, post and pre incident support need to be done uh, by the devops if there is a problem or downtime or there is some unexpected issue ha occurred so devops need to provide that support until that is recovered during the incident after the incident and pre uh, even uh, when the incident occurs right so monitoring is another aspect of the devops they need to regularly monitor uh, and check what is the health and whether they need to do a up tearing or down tearing all those aspects also comes under the devops the other key area is the root cause analysis in case if there is any problem occurred they need to do a rcs so root cause analysis is a key element here to make sure that the same type of issue is not repeated if the same issue is occurred repeatedly the total fault is from the devops or the respective stakeholders so that's the reason you know any software development process or will uh, be based on the root cause analysis so that they can fix that issue not to be repeated so moving on to the overall activities i'll cover in my next episode on the overall activities as well thanks for watching my videos